When you read classic mythology by authors like Homer or the Brothers Grimm or Superman comics, you realize that a lot of men are obsessed with immortality. That's why they have kids, so some part of themselves will live on. Then when they see how the kids turn out, they come up with another plan. Like they'll build something that'll live forever. They might carve a statue of, say, Paul Bunyan's ox. They'd rather carve a statue of themselves, but they know nobody will go look at it. Men would rather live in reflected glory than have none at all. That's why they wear team jackets. It's not smart or correct, but it's one of the things that makes us what we are. trimmings, man, if you come to the right place. Or, how about a little turkey? That's Harold I'm talking about. Ranger Gorg are gonna see him. Ranger's just been out there a while, isn't he? And Winston's gonna try and get a word in. And now, here's a guy who needs no introduction. Here's a guy who needs more introduction than I have the stomach to give him, my nephew Harold. <laughs> Bunch of us sitting around the lodge last night, kind of chowing into the pork and beans, and we started thinking about ways we could make money. We've been doing an awful lot of that lately. He means the sitting around on the pork and beans part. That's what they do a lot of. <laughs> no, as opposed to the making money and thinking part. <laughs> It occurred to us that a lot of people will pay big money to see those attractions like uh, Grand Canyon or Niagara Falls or that even that giant sleeping giant sleeping giant giant thing they got up there. <laughs> and you know what these things are? These are natural wonders. So naturally, we're wondering, what about Rock Reef Point? Harold, what do you see when you look at Rock Reef Point? A rock, a reef, and a point. Oh, Harold, <laughs> don't use your eyes. Use your imagination. Oh, okay. Well, oh. Alrighty. Well, well, on a clear summer day, you know, really late in the day, sometimes I see a, a Moruvian space station. You know, it's got twin landing pods, and it's got those peripheral uh, phaser outposts, you know, that protect the microwave transporter base. And it sits directly in front of that computer-enhanced digitally beta screen thing. It's a sleeping possum. That's what it looks like, Harold. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't see that. It looks like a giant sleeping possum made out of granite lying on its back. Well, where's the legs? Where are they? Well, we'll add them on. I'll make one of plywood. <laughs> what with the head and the tail? Same thing, Harold. Doesn't matter. We've got the body. That's the tough part. So once we get all that stuff glued on there, we're going to advertise it as the giant sleeping possum made out of stone. Why don't you leave it as it is and advertise it as a giant sleeping possum that was run over by a train? <laughs> <laughs> You know, on this job, I'm always supposed to be watching out for forest fires. But once in a while, I've got this incredible urge to blink. But I don't. <laughs> oh, you hear a lot of talk about spinach and soy and which one makes the perfect supper. But when it comes to that, I'll tell you, boy, you can't beat peanut butter. Easy to cut, easy to chew, and it never goes hard as a rock. Peanut butter is the one and only food so good it made Mr. Ed talk. <laughs> All right, that special lady in your life has got a birthday coming up. You have absolutely no idea what to get her. Now, just because you're close, that don't mean she's going to want them power tools that you've been eyeing, eh? <laughs> and, and, and never, 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 never go into a lady's clothing store. All right? Because you're just going to end up buying something that the manager never thought she'd sell to anybody with working eyesight. You know, like, guys who hate shopping should never find themselves in a women's clothing store, eh? You're going to just walk out with some dress made out of, like, carpeting or something, eh? <laughs> or the ugliest see-through nighty in the world, full of them, like, happy face patches. And you got to be careful you don't buy a gift that she takes as an insult, you know? Like, say, a membership to a fitness club or dance lessons, or a facelift coupon. I recommend cash, eh? It's the gift that keeps on going. All right, well, you know what you can do? Either buy something to eat or something that dies. Or like a pet. Or like flowers. Oh. Yeah, yeah. 
because, I mean, you know you're going to make a mistake, but with food or flowers, you know, there's a life expectancy there. You can throw them out. It's okay. Whereas when you get one of them jelly-filled, glow-in-the-dark combination neck massager and beer cooler with the built-in digital clock and replica Swiss Army knife, <laughs> they go on forever. You know what I think the best gift is? Just spend some quality time with the little missus. You know, take her to one of them classy restaurants where they got real metal cutlery. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that'll show her that you think she's something special, all right. Unless she'd prefer the cash. <laughs> with uh, Rock Reef Point about to become the number one tourist spot in the area. I think it's up to the residents of Possum Lake to make those tourists feel at home by taking as much of their money as possible. And the best way to do that is by selling them overpriced food. So today on the Handyman Corner, I'm gonna show you how you can make a portable snack counter. <laughs> you know, today's urban night, everything is go, go, go. So you wanna sell them anything, you gotta be on the go yourself. That's the beauty of this unit right here. All you need is a piece of kitchen countertop and a couple of old seat belts that were just wearing a hole in the back of your pants anyhow. <laughs> and you're all set. You just pick her up and you can follow your tourists down the street or even into the woods, preparing food as they check out the various sites. <laughs> Next step, pick up yourself up a bunch of these uh, small appliances which you can get at a yard sale or whatever. You might get an old toaster or one of these uh, hot air popcorn popper units or a camp stove or, you know, you get the idea of it. Now, if you need, uh, you need electricity for some of these because they're electrical appliances and they use that type of thing, uh, what you want to do is get yourself uh, a shopping cart. Now, a lot of the seniors use these, so they're easy to borrow or whatever. <laughs> and what you want to do is open that up and uh, fill that up with some of the car batteries. And then uh, you want to cut, uh, cut the handle here right in half so she'll thread through your belt loops. Makes it easier for towing. <laughs> now, to, uh, to connect the, uh, the, uh, all the appliances onto the counter, we could drill holes and bolt them in there, or we could uh, glue it on some sort of polymer uh, adhesive there, but that would probably ruin the uh, marble laminate bake stuff. So instead, we're going to use the handyman secret weapon, duct tape. <laughs> now, she's starting to take shape, isn't she? Got everything laid out here just the way I want it. Got the popcorn maker there at the end. I got the toaster next to that. And they're both sitting on top of my microwave oven there. That's all plugged into the batteries, of course. And I got the uh, camp barbecue, kind of a neat little thing. Briquettes are a little scary. <laughs> and over on this side, I got the uh, deep fryer, and I got the crepe maker. I got the donuts there. I got the drinks, and I got a little hot plate over here, and I got a little uh, hot chocolate cappuccino or something. And this here, the tap holes, something I don't real need here. Ideal for the condiments. I just reach down underneath, give them some little squeeze. Got myself some ketchup. Want to add a little mustard to that? No problem. <laughs> Let's fire her up. Now, maybe fire is a bad word. <laughs> well, there, I got her working now, and I can follow those tourists anywhere they want to go, making food for them. Even if they're not on the go, they certainly will be back to eat this stuff. <laughs> so if women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Here's cooking at you, kid. <laughs> Stay tuned and see what not to do with one of them radio-controlled model airplanes. And I'm going to make an ear bigger than Prince Charles. I want to talk to all you guys who are just celebrating your 50th birthday or are just getting over the hangover. <laughs> You'll know what I'm talking about when they bring in the birthday cake and tell you every candle represents a decade. <laughs> you know, when you get to midlife, a lot of times you, you stop and reflect on your accomplishments your position in the community and your career and your family situation and a lot of times you come to the conclusion that life stinks and you really blew it. <laughs> but you know, you got to look on the bright side, you know. Actually, almost everybody's life stinks. You know? <laughs> Hardly anybody gets what they want. Millionaires want to be billionaires. Married guys want to be playboys. Playboys want to meet someone worth marrying. And maybe you regret not marrying that uh, first girlfriend when you were both sweet 16. But remember, you you're not sweet 16 anymore, neither is she. If you passed each other on the street today, you'd both be thinking, boy, somebody's really let themselves go. <laughs> so if you're sitting there thinking that your life is over and you really blew it, remember, your life is only half over and you only half blew it. <laughs> so get out there and finish the job. <laughs> remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. <laughs> Well, 
the project of turning Rock Reef Point into a giant sleeping possum has hit a few snags. <clears throat> I made the left ear. Stinky made the right ear. And Moose Thompson made a head out of uh, hollow plywood. Well, why would he make the head hollow? Working from experience, I guess, Harold. <laughs> and then Stinky attached a sheet metal tail to the end of her there, and then the wind come up and we had a real problem. Yeah, I know. A big wooden eye went flying past my bedroom window. Thought I was in the twilight zone. You are, Harold. <laughs> the whole face went up and smashed through a million bits on top of Rock Reef Point, but the metal tail swung down, jammed right into the rock face, and then we noticed what we had there. We had a rock face with a giant metal tail jammed in there for a nose. Did you notice who that looked like, Harold? Oh, yeah, it was amazing, yeah. Looked just like a guy with no face and no hair and a fake possum tail for a nose. <laughs> exactly, Johnny McDonald. Ronald McDonald's brother? Sir Johnny McDonald, Harold, the first prime minister of Canada. Now what we're gonna do is put another face on each side of them there. We can have a natural formation like that Mount Rushmore they got in the States. Uncle Red, those faces are carved into that stone of Mount Rushmore. It's not a natural formation. You should talk. <laughs> well, all right, fine. If they can carve them, we can carve them. What we'll do is put some faces up there of the men who've made this country as great as it is, Harold. Oh, great! The Fathers of Confederation and Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> We're here at Fire Tower 13 with the man who stands on guard for trees, Ranger Guard. Thanks a lot for coming, Red. All right, no problem. Thanks a lot. Okay. All right. Oh, okay, all right. Come <laughs> here, Harold. Come. <laughs> Where are the rest of the guys? Oh, well, they're up at Rock Reef Point. Uh, you know, car oh, yeah. carving on rocks, that kind of thing. I made, I made stone baked pizza for everyone. Oh, my gosh. Yep. That'll be cooked by high noon. Wow. Well, maybe Harold and I'll have a piece of that later, because we do want to talk to you about rocks, you know, if you're going to, say, do some carving or maybe make, a, like, a Mount Rushmore type of thing, whatever it was you had in mind. You guys are making a Mount Rushmore? Well, yeah, but we're, we're doing it with famous Canadians. Yeah. That's why you came to me? Well, yeah, because we thought, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a rock thing. OK. You can, what, what? All right, I'm going to be immortalized in stone, I guess. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Gosh. A man who never abandoned his post. A man who never lost faith. Ranger Gord, his head 100 feet high, all at rock. Yeah, that part sounds right. <laughs> okay, well, a lot of the rock around here is igneous rock. Oh, uh, yeah. Part of the Canadian shield. Uh, it's granite, perfect for carving. And what about the rock up at Rock Reef Point? Well, most of that is mica, sandstone, and limestone. Wow. Yeah, it was formed from the waste of the quarries that used to be around here. Oh, so if you tried to carve that stuff. Landslide. Oh, boy, Harold, we gotta go. No, no, what, what about the pizza? Oh. Oh. <laughs> just, just have some off your shoe. <laughs> it's mail call. <laughs> All right, we got a, a letter here. Here's the first letter. Oh, it's from Neil Barron of uh, Mount Pearl, Newfoundland. And Neil poses uh, a number of questions. But the one that struck my fancy was, um, uh, Dear Red Green, what is your favorite power tool? Oh. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough one, Neil, because, uh, you know, they say there's a right tool for every job, exception being Harold here. <laughs> But you really have to clarify what the work is before you can pick your favorite tool. For example, you wouldn't want to build, say, a dock with a lathe. <laughs> Maybe the most versatile tool would be a good choice. You know, like, uh, like an electric drill. It has a variety of applications. Yeah, okay, most definitely an electric drill would be my choice, most definitely. <laughs> He's not asking you, Harold. Okay, true enough, you know. But I was just, you know, I'm thinking, I'm suggesting, uh, you know, electric drill as, as a suggestion. You know, that's just what I'm thinking is, you know, electric drill. Well, suddenly I'm thinking pile driver. <laughs> now, Neil, there are really uh, two components to your, to your major power tool. You got the rotational spin, and you got the forward impact. Now, there's a thing called a rotor hammer or a hammer drill that actually combines these two forces. Yeah, 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 I saw one of those. Yeah, it's, yeah. it goes like, whoop, 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 whoop. It's got like a bit and a chisel. Oh, I saw a whoop, 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 whoop. It's not cool, right? No one cares, Harold, what you saw. <laughs> so, Neil, to get yourself the big frame rotor hammer, take that electric motor off there, throw that one into the lake and stick on, say, a slant six out of a 63 Valiant. <laughs> Clamp 
her down with the big bumper clamps on there, and I'll tell you, you got one heck of a power tool on your hand, young fella. <laughs> be a little hard to handle, wouldn't it? Well, you don't have to run her for long. You know? <laughs> And remember, remember, Neil, let the weight of the tool do the work, all right? And uh, send us a picture if you try this, because actually I just, I just thought of it right now. I don't think you should lead our viewers on like that. There's a little harmless fun, Harold. Yeah, well, what if somebody gets hurt? Well, it's harmful fun, then. <laughs> what, if, what, what, if, what if somebody sues you? All right, an electric drill. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> One of my favorite hobbies today, model airplane flying on Adventures with Bill. It took me two years to build this uh, particular model that I have right here, but Bill's here. Bill's here now. Thank you, Bill. Now, you don't want to get upset sometimes when things happen, because look what he's done here. Look what he's done. Look what he's done. He's brought a replace, and suddenly I'm thinking, hey, I didn't like that old plane anyhow. <laughs> Who cares, huh? <laughs> what? 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 Oh. Oh, I, I, oh, I miss, oh, I, I guess I miss, well, all right, all right. Anyway, we've got a, a, a great plane, doesn't matter whose it is, huh? The thing with a hobby is, it's, it's, it's a great idea, relaxing, takes your mind off your worries, and go out there and just, Bill takes a turkey baster out of his jacket, which makes sense. And I'm trying to fool around, this is a radio control, he doesn't even have the, the strings or the wires, this is one of these fancy units, but she doesn't seem to be, a, a couple of double funnels there to get the gas in, and he's got her gassed up, and I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with the controller, and I think it's the batteries on that, you know, you, I think when you leave the batteries in there for over seven, eight years with the humidity, and Bill, I think you maybe you were a little premature on that was a little premature starting. I think you were early on that one. I'm trying to show him the bat. And with Bill, anything he doesn't understand, he licks, <laughs> which is, it can be a dangerous, dangerous habit. To, anyway, up she goes the plane, and then she's turned around and she starts heading back towards us and takes off and everything. And now it's like, but as I say, you know, with a hobby, I think you're getting out in the outdoors, uh, you're getting some exercise there, and uh, you, you get to experience, uh, you know, some uh, bonding and uh, spending a lot of time together, and, uh, you know, it gets the heart going, gets the blood pumping down. Bill suddenly realizes what he needs is another radio controller, so uh, we got one in the back of the van there, and I guess one's as good as the next, and he starts flicking that around, and the... No, no, that's not the right, no, what the heck is it? No, 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 get rid of it, all right, all right, no problem. But as I say, you get a chance to think and be innovative and come up with other solutions. Here's another radio controller. We got tons of them in there. And this one, I think, is gonna, what? <laughs> uh, uh, I don't, I don't, and that, what's well, that? Well, that's, he's turned it into a, turned it into a car. <laughs> and uh, as I say, the hobby can be relaxing and can kind of get your frustrations. Like, where you go, go, where you go, where you go? <laughs> Stay tuned while Dalton gives us all the finger, and I experience the loneliness of the long-distance poet. Well, the big sculpture project up at Rock Reef Point is moving ahead, okay? We find that when you're doing uh, painting a picture or perhaps doing a sculpture of a Canadian famous person, uh, you're better to stay kind of non-committal on who it is until you see how she turns out. <laughs> Boy, by the time you guys are finished with Rock Reef Point, it's gonna look like a Rock Reef speed bump. <laughs> that type of rock is very hard to work with, Harold. We had Sir Charles Tuffer just about completely done, and then we knocked off a real important bit, and now he's Margaret Trudeau. <laughs> well, maybe you shouldn't try doing so many. You know, just stick with the one you got on the very end there. That looks just like John Diefenbaker. That's Anne Murray. <laughs> Woo, boy, she's let herself go. I don't know. I, I don't think uh, works of art should be this hard. Are we doing something wrong, Harold? Oh, yes, always. <laughs> I think you should get the proper equipment and the proper materials. And you know, it's oftentimes when people are doing sculptures, it's best if those people know how to say sculpt, like, say, a sculptor. <laughs> Harold, you take the fun out of everything. No, I take the danger. That's what I just said. <laughs> My snowmobile. By me, roaring along on my snowmobile, throttle wide open, zooming over the hills, sailing down the gullies, smashing into a hidden rock, careening through a rail fence, tearing up a stand of shrubs, cartwheeling off the roof of the barn, and finally coming to rest 26 feet up a pine tree. Golly, that's four feet higher than last year. <laughs> We're out here by the main highway at Humphrey's Everything Store to show you people the art of bartering, where I'm going to trade some of these collectibles and so on to get myself some tools that we can use on our sculpture up at Rock Reef Point. All righty, Dalton. Ready to do some bartering? Yeah, yeah, I guess, yep. Yeah. Okay. This here belonged to my grandfather. Is that worth anything, do you think? 
And all of it is, don't tell your kids. I'll just take the money, waste it, spend it on something stupid. Yeah, all right, uh, this actually was uh, part of the original homestead, you know. Yeah, yeah, I've seen tons of them. Sold brand new in 1900 for 30 cents. And what would it be worth now, would you think? 30 cents, it's scrap. Oh. Of course, I bet my daughter would spend 50 bucks on it. Is she around? <laughs> you know, it used to be people didn't throw money away. Today's kids just spend it willy-nilly, and who pays? The parents, not the daughters, no sir. You know that my daughter took my money and, and, and bought two burnt-out cars and a dual tour bus. Probably bought them for scrap iron. To live in. Oh. Yes, oh yes, she and the guy she's seeing are gonna weld them together and live in. Without heating, without lighting, without a marriage license. <laughs> what do you think of that, Red? Well, now, when I answer those kinds of questions, I either end up getting punched or driven home in a cop car. <laughs> Tell you what, though, Dalton, I could take those vehicles off your hands. We'll strip them for parts. Like to strip her boyfriend for parts. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking we could use the car parts for our sculpture. Gotta be easier than carving, right? I could, I could use the car parts as parts of the faces, like that Crispo guy does with the bed sheets. Yeah? Well, what did you give me for them? Well, I'll give you everything I brought. Well, then it's not worth anything. Well, that's how barter works. We're trading things of equal value here. <laughs> How's the deal? Great. Actually, I'm up 30 cents. <laughs> we came that close to a huge success turning Rock Reef Point into the Canadian Mount Rushmore. I heard old man Sedgwick got nailed by a Greyhound bus grill. No, but we came that close. <laughs> oh, you should have seen it, Harold. We had car grills for teeth. We had trunk lids for ears. We had headlights for eyes. And when you waved at it, they'd flick up onto the high beam. <laughs> There's something odd with seeing Dr. Norman Bethune made out of Brickland parts. And Sir Wilfrid Laurier looked like one of the Power Rangers. Ah, <laughs> oh, it was beautiful. Art, entertainment, and the history of transportation all in the one attraction. <laughs> the only thing we left out was gravity. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Gravity was there. Yeah, right at the end especially. Boy, I'm telling you. You know, we should have attached things a little more securely. Duct tape is good, but it's not that good. <laughs> Luckily, nobody was hurt. Except the beach. All that scrap metal all over the place looked like the, the cover to a Neil Young CD. <laughs> well, that stuff won't be there long. The waves really pound in over there. You're gonna let that scrap metal dissolve into Possum Lake? Good for it, Harold. It's iron. Popeye would be real happy with Possum Lake. <laughs> yeah, because it looks so much like olive oil. <laughs> Oh, it's your meeting time, Uncle Rick. Yeah, you go ahead, Harold. I'll be down in a little while. If my wife is watching, I've, I've come to realize that if you're going to sculpt the human form, you have to study the human form. So I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. <laughs> I may not know art, but I know what I like. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. Until next time, on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Boss Lodge, keep your stick on the ice.